the 17th of November 2012. Chris Weird, welcoming you to today's United Kingdom Talk. As always, uh, thanks for joining me, boys and girls. Well, I'm all on my own at the moment. My friend, my best friend, is in Thailand on a little holiday with his other half. Um, he, um, isn't it wonderful, the, the wonders of modern technology and especially FaceTime? Oh, what is this I have in my hand today? Could it be the new Apple iPhone 5, white in colour? Oh, how what? Yes, free upgrade. Thank you. No money has... Oh, the cat's moaning. Katie! What do you want, darling? Can you hear her? What do you want? You coming in? Come on in. Come on. Katie! Oh, I just don't understand that cat. She sit, sits there, meowing away, right? So you open the door, and she stops, and you go towards her, and she walks off. What is all that about with cats, dear? She got very excited this morning. Oh, yes, because I was doing my breakfast. All of a sudden, I heard her meowing at the door. She was looking out the, the glass pane, and there was a great big fat pigeon in the garden, boys and girls. It was a pigeon was in the garden, and it was waiting. Katie was waiting to go and eat the pigeon, but I opened the door and the pigeon flew off. So that was the end of it. There was also a squirrel. A squirrel was climbing up my tree without permission. I mean, I wouldn't mind so much. These creatures don't even pay rent, dear. Anyway, as I was saying, yes, my friend's in Thailand at the moment, and uh, I was, he was FaceTimed me a couple of times since, because he went, um, Tuesday I think it was he went, and uh, his face might timed me a couple of times on my new iPhone 5, okay? Bit different to the iPhone 4. The iPhone 4 is smaller. I've, I've, I've already bought two cases for it. Very good. Off eBay, I get my cases off eBay. Only a fiver on there. Because some of these cases for these phones are ever so expensive, dear. 22, 20, I've seen a case for 30 quid. Why would you pay 30 quid for a blooming phone case? Well, you can get one for five pounds off eBay, thank you. I've got a, a black one, like a rubberized thing, and I've got a, a, a clear one as well, which is quite nice. So my new white Apple iPhone, and um, not much difference to the other one, really. I mean, it's got a, a larger screen, and I can do FaceTime now over 3G which means I don't have to be in wireless to get to do the FaceTime. And, uh, and indeed, uh, when uh, Ronnie, my best mate, gave me a, a FaceTime the other day, I was out on my bicycle. Isn't that, it's just the weirdest thing. And he was in, it was in uh, Bangkok at the time uh, with his other half. And uh, he was FaceTiming from the hotel, I think, or the airport, one of the two. And I was out on my bike. How wonderful that we would actually see each other, you know, while we're doing, while we're on our conversations now. Isn't it, eh? Old Stella. Stella, who is a regular watcher of this programme, regular viewer, was saying, Oh, no, don't get the iPhone, it's useless. Oh, stop moaning, Stella. Stop bleeding moaning, will you, for Christ's sake, woman. That's what I wanted. Criticising everything I do all the time, dear. And where's the picture of you when you used to be a boy? <coughs> huh? If you sent it, I might have a... I still haven't got a clue who you are. <coughs> Terrible, really, isn't it? Please send a picture of you in your younger days, because I can't remember you. Please send pictures now. So, he's in Thailand at the moment. Uh, he spent his first... No, I think they, they've they gone to... Oh, what's the name of the place? Oh, I can tell you, hang on. Just a moment, because he sent me a, he sent me a WhatsApp message, because he's not using texts while he's abroad, because that's quite expensive, apparently. Let me see, where's my... Wait, he's in Koh Samurai. K-O... What is it? K-O-H-S-A-M-U-I. Ko... Ko Sumai. Foreign sounding place, really, dear. I don't think you'd catch me going somewhere. I mean, what can you eat, dear? What can you eat in places like Thailand? Oh my God, I would just starve to death. I would waste away, dear. We can't be eating any of that foreign food. I told you that before. Chinese or Indian or Thai or whatever. Oh no. No, 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 no. I would have to take tins. I would have to take tins of food. That's how it is. I can't eat that foreign food. I can only go to places like Australia and America where all the food is the same as ours. I'm okay there. And besides, you know, ve ve uh, vegetable area. Although I suppose um, Thai food, you can have vegetarian f Thai food, can you? Hey, we can't be eating dogs and cats, dear. Oh, no. Oh, shh, shh. Don't say that while my cat's out there. Shh. Katie. I think she's gone. Katie, 
Well, I can close that door again now. It's a bit chilly in here today. It's gone. It's all got a little bit cold again. So first of all, he was in Bangkok for a day, and I said, "What's that like?" He said, "It stinks." He's in the market, the market areas where they have a, what was he said here, a nighttime market apparently. He said it absolutely skink, stinks there and there's so many people, I would hate it. He said it's so busy, so many people, I would absolutely hate it. I like a bit of peace and quiet me, do you know what I mean? I know at work times, different thing altogether, work, nice bar full of people enjoying themselves, yep, yep uh, that's, that's how I work. But when it's all over, I get in my little car, I come out here and it's lovely and peaceful and quiet. Is that an age thing, do you think? I certainly remember in my 30s, I used to go to this club called Trade in um, central London. Uh, and I mean, it was packed. Absolutely packed this place, ever so hot in there. And I loved it. Would I want to do that again? I don't think so. I like a bit of peace and quiet. What about you? Do you like it busy or peace and quiet? Huh? And this, this holiday I'm going to in uh, February in New York. Now, New York is a very, very busy place. Ordinarily, I wouldn't go somewhere like that. I'm only really going to see Barry Manilow in concert on my birthday. Yes, at the St. James Theatre on the 5th of February. Could Perhaps you could come as well. It could be one here. Happy party. You can sit next to me. We can share our sweets. But don't you dare talk to me while Barry is singing. I can't have any of people talking at me while Barry Manilow is singing, please. Do not speak to me. I'm trying to be entertained by the legend himself, the living legend known as Barry Manilow. Looks like we made it. And you know I can smile without you. Oh, yeah. Can smile. I, 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 could, I could go on all day. Yeah, so I'm only going. I, I, I couldn't go somewhere. Um, without something specific to do that's full of people everywhere. Anyway, him and, him and his other half, they seem to be enjoying themselves and uh, they've now got to their um, their other place, what, the Kumar something or other. <laughs> and they've got, I said, uh, uh, I said, um, what sort of hotel have you got? And he's a bit poncy, my mate, do you know what I mean? He's a bit bit up himself. He's a, it's not a hotel, it's a beach hut. Apparently it's a beach hut, you know. I do hope he finds some creepy corners in there, that'll upset him. <laughs> it's, it's five star beach hut, he says. Oh, he's so up his own ass. He really is. Oh, here comes the cat again. Yes, Katie? 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 No, oh, see, she just keeps meowing at the door. What do you want, darling? What? Are you coming down? What do you want? Do you want something to eat? Do you mind if I pop down and just, just see if my cat wants something to eat? I'm, I don't know what's wrong with her. I've already fed her once today. Come on then, girl. Down you go. Stop meowing, woman. What is wrong with you today? Down we go. Come on. Come along, dear. You know I can smile. Now, what's wrong? So you got... Oh! Is it no food left in there? Or do you want to go out? Oh, you want to go out? Okay, go on out you go. It's a bit cold out there, Kate. Or do you want some food out there? Oh, nearly tripped over then. One second. Whiskers grilled with chicken. For some reason she likes to eat outside. I don't know why that is. One minute now. Very awkward holding this while I'm doing this. I'll try to open it with my teeth. There we are. Whiskers for Katie. All right, you enjoy that, darling. Oh, look, she can't wait to get her head in there. That's what was wrong. She was hungry, bless her. All right, Katie? Thank you, wouldn't go and miss, would it? <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> you like those people I um, gave them their passports back the other day. Are you still there? You can come back upstairs. Oh, hang on. Sean Richards wanted to see my wall of clocks. So here it is, Sean. Wall of, I've got a, a wall in my kitchen that is full of clocks. Why? <laughs> I don't know to be honest. It's 10.30 in the morning here in Royal Berkshire. Right, back up the stairs then. Thank you. Oh, <coughs> Ooh, and by the way, today, this programme is being dedicated to my mother. A picture of my mother, uh, who died on the 18th of November 2000. 
So just coming up to um, 12 years, and uh, I do miss my mum, so I'm dedicating today's show to her. And uh, tomorrow indeed, um, at uh, my local church, we've got a mass, uh, St. Joseph's, hang on, what have I done there? That's it, St. Joseph's in um, Bracknell. Uh, I've got a mass being said for her, and my aunt's got one, my aunt is my mum's sister, <coughs> and my aunt's got uh, a mass being said for her tomorrow, so yes mum, this, this show today is for you. If somehow you can watch my shows in heaven, then I hope it will make you laugh mother, alright, and not worry, do not worry about me, thank you. Um, where were we now, Thailand, yeah, so, so he's in a beach hut. He's in a beach hut. But mind you, he's a little bit funny with his food as well. I said, how was the first day in Bangkok? He said, I didn't fancy any of the, of the um, main courses. He said, but I, I had, I think he said he had six puddings. Six! Oh God, he's going to be as fat as ass, isn't it? Which, which should please me, actually. You know, I do like it when Ronnie, Ronnie starts putting on a bit of weight because he's always mentioning mine and then I can start mentioning his. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, shocking, isn't it? Anyway, so that's it. He's in Thailand at the moment, so I have the job of going around his house twice a day and feeding his five cats. You, you'd think, like, you'd, th you'd think they'd want to be loved, wouldn't you, or something like that. But I go in, and they're kind of round my legs for a while, a couple of them, and then, they, then as soon as I put the food down, they're over to the food, and then it's like I'm not even there. <laughs> and can you believe he's left his heating on for the cats? How lovely is that? Uh-oh. Doesn't want these little pussies to get cold. They are nice cats. He's got five. He's got two gingers. There's one tabby. There's a, oh, what do they call it now? A rag doll cat. So it's like grey and black. Beautiful cat. And a black cat as well called Maddie. And she's, she's an old girl. She likes, to, she likes to be fed outside. So that is this cat. So I'm going around there keeping an eye on his house. And he's, he's actually away for two weeks, I think. Uh, uh, because it's quite a long time. So that's uh, Thailand, so busy busy bee at the moment, um, I've got quite a nice lot of work coming at the moment for my uh, uh, DJing and karaoke. Uh, tonight, Saturday night, I'm doing uh, someone's engagement party, which is actually five minutes up the road from here, in a sports centre that I used to belong to, the um, uh, Royal Berkshire Rackets Club. Uh, but they started putting the prices up and it got to like 700 quid a year, and I'm, I'm not paying this. So that's why I left and went to a Virgin in Wokingham. So I'm looking forward to that uh, 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 engagement party tonight. They want they want quite a lot of bit of R and B B this evening, so I've got all that prepared and already. You have to be prepared in advance. Can't just go to these places. I know mobile discos that go to play and they just turn up and hope for the best. I don't think you can do that. You've got to speak to the um person that you want to DJ for and get some sort of idea of, of exactly what they want. What is that how can you do that? Yeah, you know, it's like it's like going to a I don't know, go going to Oh, I don't know, Go, going to a restaurant and having not having a clue what they do. I mean, oh, mind, mind you, I suppose that's part of the excitement. But you can't, you can't be, can't be a DJ and just turn, loads of them do it. Turn up to a place and thinking, oh, well, they'll want this, and then they want something completely different. It could happen, you know. So when people book me <coughs> for their weddings or birthdays, anything like that, I do like to go and meet the person. And if I think. If I think I can't give them what they want, I won't take the job. It's as simple as that, really. Although that, ha I don't think it's, it's, yeah, it's happened once. I think once it happened, where they wanted, uh, they also wanted a rec an, an old record player deck there as well. They wanted that as well because they had some records that they wanted to play, and I couldn't provide that, so I just didn't take the job. And and simple as that. All right, so that's that's uh, that's Thailand. And talking of swimming. Because I used to go to that sports centre, I'd go to work, Woking, uh, uh, Virgin Active in Wokingham now. I would have been travelling there, dear. Oh, the swimming pool has been bloody freezing cold, dear, for two weeks. Two weeks it's been freezing cold. Anyway, so last week, I think it was Thursday, I noticed that it had got a... No, it was Wednesday. Wednesday, I noticed it had got a bit warmer. And then Thursday, uh, it was a bit warmer still, and I, th I think it's just about up to its level now. Although yesterday, I got a text yesterday, um, Friday, 
very early in the morning, I don't know who was up there about like, you know, one o'clock in the morning, texted me to say that uh, there's no hot water in the club and that the swimming pool is closed at the moment. So I don't know what's going on there. They seem to have some sort of problem there with perhaps, I don't know how it all works. Is there just one boiler for all the hot water and heating in one of these places? I have no idea how it all works. Um, so I hope they've sorted that out again, but it was horrible. Oh, it was so cold, so cold. And the trouble is you start talking to people and they say to you, well, you're the only one that complains. And you know damn well you're not the only one that complains. Why do they do that? Why don't they just say, I'm sorry, sir, we'll look into it or something like that? What concerns me is that it was so um, cold for such a long period of time. You know, two weeks. How did, how did it happen that it was cold for two weeks? Anyway, it's sorted out now, but uh, not really very happy about that. And also on Thursday when I was in there, you know, I've been going about 18 months and often not there, but certainly when I belonged to the council swimming pool, you'd always get someone in there who was a, like, you know, thought they were professional swimmers and they don't look as they're going for all they're concerned about is going forward and back as quickly as possible and sod anyone else who's in the way. Well, we've got one of those now in Virgin Active, haven't we? We've now got one in there, and he gets in the pool. It's not just me. I've seen him. I see it. Yes, I see it Thursday. I see Thursday. So he gets in the pool in the slow lane. Okay. So at the moment we've got one person. With, it says slow, medium, and fast, but it doesn't really doesn't really happen like that. If there's someone in the other lanes, you jump in the other one. It's, you know, it's as simple as that. It's not a huge pool. So, we've got two people in the middle lane, two people in the fast lane, and there's one poor elderly lady in the slow lane. So he stood, and I watched him, he stands at the end of there, and the, the old woman gets there and he jumps in. And he says, do you mind if I swim up and down one side and you up and down the other side? So that, that the elderly lady, unbeknowing to anything that's about to happen, says yes. Okay. So off he went and he splashes and he goes up and down. He's like, you know, the professional swimmer, you know, head to the side as he breathes in and then down. Not like me. Because when I swim, my head is above the water at all times. We can't go below the water, dear. I might drown. I might drown if I put my face in the water. No, my, I'm one of those people with my head out, head out of the water at all times. Thank you very much. Yes. And this bloke is going up and down, up and down, up and down, and splashing everyone that's in his way. One moment. So I, 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 keep, me in, I, I keep doing that. I need to turn the other computer on as well while I'm doing this show, so it's all ready when I need to do my editing. editing. Not, not that you'd know there was an awful lot of editing on this show. There we are. <coughs> um, yeah, so up is, I'm watching him going up and down. This poor woman, every time he gets near her, she turns her head to one side to try and avoid the spray that's coming out. Because he, he goes fast. You know, I'm sure he's a very, very good swimmer. But he doesn't care who else is in the pool. And, and he doesn't, just doesn't, there's no respect. You understand? And he's not, this bloke isn't young. I would say he's about 40. 40, 42, that sort of age. And they think they can just go up and down. Well, they do. They go up and down and they don't care who's in the way. They don't look or anything like that. And it bloody well annoys It really annoys me. He's done it to me before as well. And I've seen him. He just goes in the pool, goes up and down, doesn't look where he's going and, uh, and that. So do you, do you know what I did? I shouldn't tell you this really. Do you know what I did? Because I was in the middle pool and I watched this going on and I looked at the way I said, you all right? And she shook her head. I said, oh, you've got one, a right one in there, my darling. I'm nearly out of this side. Why don't you come in here when I finish? And she just smiled and, and carried on. Anyway, so to get out of the pool, I have to go up steps, which there's only one lot of steps, which happen to be in the slow lane, which is the same lane as that dear old lady and uh, and he is uh, swimming up and down. Just a moment. Why is that? Why is that? My computer isn't starting. That one over there. One minute. What's happened? Do I have to click? Oh, I have to click my name. One minute. <coughs> is that on there? Lovely. Um, yes. So uh, so I finish my swimming, and I go under the string. Oh yeah, I can. I do put in my head under the water when I go from one lane to the other. That's the, that's the only time I do put my head under. Okay, so I've gone under into that side and I've crossed over. And then I saw him coming down at the speed of light again. 
you know, splashing the poor lady on the way. And as he got to the steps, I, I, I went up the steps, two steps, and I pretended that I wasn't looking and put my leg right out in the water, and he went crashing into it. <laughs> Bastard. How dare he? And he served, and he stopped, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, I didn't say a word, and then he put his head in the water and then just carried on. Nasty man. You need to have respect for other people in that swimming pool. You can almost, you know, I know sometimes when there's children in the pool, um, they don't really go in that pool a lot, but when they're in, like, public pools and you're in there, and they crash into you, you, you can almost accept that, can't you? You know, that, oh, they're, well, they're still learning, you know, they're, 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 and, 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 and what have you. But this man is just so rude, and at that age, you should damn well know better and respect, respect the other people that are in the pool. And occasionally, occasionally, yes, you may have to slightly move over to the left or slightly move over to the right to let other people pass. Oh, it just annoys me. It's not the only one. It's the only one in there that I've seen so far. But I've come across it many, many times in other pools, and it's, it's just not nice, is it? It really isn't. Perhaps you've got some... Um, experiences of that sort of thing in swimming pools where you've been, have you? Because I'd like to know about them. Do let me know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Email time. Boys and girls, I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, nothing from Marge this week other than one or two very tiny little notes I spotted there that she's put on uh, some <clears throat> some of the YouTube things, because uh, as well as listening to this show, you can watch it on YouTube. My YouTube, YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK. All right, and if you're a Facebook friend of mine, you'll notice all the updates coming on there. Uh, join my Facebook. Um, my, my username on Facebook is the same as well. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And uh, Marge says she loves the clock that's behind me. You often hear it chiming away on the show. Uh, so I'm uh, yes, I like that clock, Marge. I can't, I don't, I think I've had that about a year now. It's lovely. It's actually battery operated. I don't think I've changed the batteries in it either yet. It's been up there about a year. And of course, every 15 minutes it does do a little bit of a chime. And uh, while I'm recording this, it just, what's the time? It's just coming up to 15 minutes to 11. So in, in one minute, to, it's, you will hear it chime again, Marge, in one minute's time, all right? Marge, no long email from you today, my darling. Where, have you, have you been busy, dear? Has Marge been busy? I did a little answer phone message for Marge as well for her answer phone. She got that uh, uh, through on the uh, email system. Would you like a little answer phone message? I can do a little answer phone message for you, boys and girls, if you want one. What's your name? Is it, what is it? Uh, Paul. Something like, hello, uh, I'm speaking for Paul. Uh, please leave your message after the tone. Come on, hurry up. Or something like that. If you like, would like a little answer for a message, do let me know. My email address, by the way, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, hello to Rick. Hello, Rick, in Pittsburgh, USA. Who says, Chris, it's been a long time since I sent in an email. Yes, I know that. Dear. Where on earth have you been, Rick? Have you been watching all the shows, Rick? Have you been listening to all the shows? Or do you sort of just pick one now and again when you've got time? I understand people don't watch all of them. I know that. Here, well, here goes the clock. You like it, don't you? You want one, don't you? You want one of those clocks. What, what make is this one, wasn't it? It's a Seiko. Okay, it's a Seiko clock. So, and it's got the moving pendulum. It's got a moving pendulum. It's a wooden thing. I know not everyone watches it. It's a little wooden thing about... It's about, th is it, is it crooked there? Uh, sometimes it gets crooked. It's about one, two, three, I suppose about three and a half foot long. About three and a half foot long and about a foot and a half wide. And it's like a, like a dark box when I'm facing and a swinging pendulum at the bottom and it, as I say, it chimes every 15 minutes. Beautiful piece of, a uh, piece of, piece of technology in it, Rick. Um, Rick says, my wife and I saw the new 007 James Bond instalment tonight. It was brilliant and spectacular. Totally agree, Rick. Got to be one of the best James Bond films I've ever seen, that one, I must admit. Uh, Daniel Craig is the best Bond, he says. 
I have seen all of them now and thought no one could reach the level of Sean Connery, but I have to tell you, wow, just wow. Give the cat... Oh, she's, she's meowing again at the door. Katie. Come on then. Katie. What is she playing out this morning, dear? I don't know what she's wearing. Give Katie a sc give the cat a scratch behind the ears. And that's from Rick in Pittsburgh. Hello, Rick. Nice to hear from you, sir. At last. When's the last time you sent in an email? It's got to be over a year, a year and a half ago, at least. But I do, I do remember names. People that used, people, people that used to, used to bother to email me. Week in, week out, and suddenly disappear. Do you think your little names disappear from my head? They certainly don't. They stay in my head. And I hope that one day we will be reunited in emails again. Reunited cause it feels so good. Reunited cause we're understood. There's one perfect Peaches and Herb song from the 80s. Very, very popular. Very popular. So uh, thanks for that, uh, Rick. My favourite uh, James Bond is uh, is uh, Mr. Roger Moore. That's my favourite one. But I have to say, yes, that that last James Bond film was fantastic. What about the end, Rick? When it's sad. Didn't expect that to happen. Poor M. Oh, poor M. Gilamo. Hello, Gilamo. Who says? I can't get messages composed quick enough. Still getting used to shorter programmes, but I have to admit that it does allow both viewers and listeners the ability to better enjoy the programme by knowing that it will be broadcast more frequently and be shorter in delivery. Yes, about half an hour shorter. We're, we do roughly half an hour now. How is your weather there now? Oh, it's cold, Oh, it's cold, um, Guillermo. It's very, very cold today, but not cold enough for the heating and not cold enough even for a jacket. Look, I've got my a black t-shirt on today. A little black t-shirt. Oh, here she comes again. Katie! What is wrong with her today? What, what do you want now? You won't come in, you won't jump on my lap, you just sit there and meow, come darling. Oh, she's wandered off again, she's doing my brain in. Cat, what is wrong? <laughs> Oh dear. Yes, so it's quite cold here at the moment. Although we had a couple of warm days this week. Well, <coughs> <coughs> I cycled to the sports centre. <coughs> Excuse me, with no coat on. Yeah, it was warm. Cat, I'm not coming out every five minutes, dear. Come in if you want to see me, darling. Um, Glamo says, it's not been too bad here in California, San Mateo, San Mateo, it sounds like a chocolate bar, doesn't it? Do you want a San Mateo? Oh, I can't believe it. Just a minute, just a minute, I've got, still going on, I've got a phone call now. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Oh yes, Jan, uh, yes, you're, you're not Jan, are you? No. I, oh, I'm sorry, sure it doesn't matter. Yes, I've been reporting the um, the Bracknell Standard now. Um, it's it's now been over a week, and they're increasing. There there are now three editions there. Uh, <coughs> yes, I know you did. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit off, really, isn't it? They just don't seem to be interested. I, I've had a couple of emails coming back back to me saying, yes, some, someone will come and collect them. Well, that was another two or three days ago now, and nothing, just nothing. <clears throat> oh, how ridiculous. I mean, yeah, meantime, I got another Bracknell Standard delivered yesterday, um, which... I, I very much doubt it's the person delivering that one. You wouldn't be so stupid as to dump your own papers, would you? Do, do you know what I mean? I, I doubt that. Oh, I can do that, yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I kind of look, looked at them. I, I remember at some point this happened years ago, and they used to put lines down the side of them, coloured lines, but I can't really see anything on them now. So, yeah, no. No idea, no idea. It's usually there when I get back, because I work at nights, you see, so I'm usually there when I get back. <coughs> 
Right so. What's your name again, please? My number or name? Uh, both, yeah. <laughs> it's Nicola, Nicola Birch. Right. My yes. Three, yes. Three, five, two. Yep. Five, two, one. Five, two, one. Lovely. Okay, Nicola. So, so if I need to ring, I'll just ring you next time, shall I? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not in on Monday, but I'm in right. The yeah, yeah. Just let me know what happens. Okay. Thank you, Nicola. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Well, I've got to tell you that phone call is driving me mad at the moment. Uh, but maybe I'll leave that for the next show. I'm going to leave that for the If you're wondering what that phone call was all about, I shall tell you on the next show on Wednesday, OK? Yes, look at look at me, hooking you into the show. Now you're wondering what it's all about. Oh, I must watch that show on Wednesday. I'll, I'll let you know on Wednesday. Um, let me go back to the uh, email here from Galamo. Sorry about that. I had to take that call in. Um, Galamo says, it's, the weather's not too bad here. Is the cold or flu bug going around there now? It is in full force over here. I took some zinc spray, followed by a toddy, which is an alcohol-infused beverage. I bet you have a few of those, do you, dear? Um, he says, oh, there's a text message coming now. God's sake, dear. Um, <clears throat> I took some uh, zinc, zinc spray. Uh, take care and hello to Katie the cat, who's, who's been very strange today. Katie! Now nah, she's disappeared completely again. I don't know what she's on. Yes, um, yes, you're quite right. There are a lot of people with colds and flu at the moment here. Um, uh, Galama, I know a lot of people that have gone down, and some people have taken time off work. <clears throat> Because they say the flu is so bad, although although in this day and age, a lot of people they just <coughs> oh I've got I've got a week off, you know, one sneeze and they're a week off work, so I don't know. But I, I am uh, detecting uh, lots of people with colds and flu at the moment that I know of. Uh, doesn't hasn't hit me really. I have the flu injection every year, so I I will probably get a few colds, you know, through the winter, but hopefully not flu. Uh, I get I'm allowed a, a free uh, a free um, flu injection. Uh, because of my asthma, and it usually keeps flu at bay, although last year it didn't work. For some reason last year I picked up the flu, and uh, and uh, that was it. So thank you, Glamo. Hello to Duffy512, who is Ian. Hello, Ian. How are you? Thank you for your little picture that you sent in of uh, Mr Bean and his parents. That was quite amusing. Thank you for that. And uh, Duffy512 says, These shows are shorter. Uh, these shorter shows are better. I have a very short attention span. You know, like most of the kids today. Oh, come on, Ian. I don't believe for one moment you have a short attention span, do you? Not you. Some of the kids do, but you certainly won't. And finally today, uh, an email from Millie in Minnesota, hello Millie, who writes, Hi Chris, I must apologise to you in advance because I'm about to go on a rant. Well, when don't you, Millie? You always go on a rant, darling. She says, on Thursday, the 8th of November, I was... Oh dear, it's, it's all going on here today, isn't it? Cat wants attention, the phones want attention. On Thursday the 8th of November, I received two letters from Fargo, North Dakota in the USA. They were from the same person and perpetrated to be uh, belated condolence letters, letters on the loss of my father. Um, regular uh, listeners to the show will know that uh, Millie sadly lost her dad recently. However, as I continued to read the note, it became more and more clear that the person who wrote the letters had taken my name from my father's obituary, which had been published in Fargo's newspaper, and had the nerve to use the death of my dad as a root rouse to get a donation out of me. I can't even describe the depth of my anger right now. Needless to say, not only did I tear those letters to pieces, but I also immediately rung my mother up to warn her that she may get something of a similar nature from this person. I wonder how it is these people can sleep at night. I wish you were here to give me a cuddle. I could use one round about now, and that's uh, Millie in Minnesota. So that's it's just horrible, Millie, you know, but there are these scam <coughs> people around all the time on the internet. I'm sure you've had, you, you, you also have, Millie, 
the uh, emails that you get from banks, you know, like three or four a day now I'm getting, you know, from various different banks telling me to log in with my details and to use this link to log in. They are all scams. There's so many people um, uh, trying to get money out of people in, in, in dodgy ways all the time. Yeah, and it's just awful to, you know, to, to look for an obituary and use the dead person to try and extract money. It's just so wrong, isn't it? It's so wrong. They not, and, and even, even legal ones that knock on your door trying to sell your stuff all the time. I just, I don't give them the, I don't even speak to them. I close the door. And that's what you must do with the emails. You, you were quite right. Tear them up and don't respond. Never ever respond to these things. Don't say, don't contact me. Or you know when you get them on the phone call? We get them here all the time. <clears throat> you know, you pick up the phone, there's a moment's silence and then it clicks and someone starts talking. Hello, is that Chris, is that Chris Reardon please? And they might say your address. And I'm like, why, who's that? And then they say it again. And I just put the phone down. That's it. They don't ring back. I never ever respond. Do not talk to them, not even a word. Put the phone down, tear the letter up, close the front door, don't give them the time of day, and unfortunately you will move them along to someone, some other poor unsuspecting person. Hopefully do, they do the same thing. All right, Millie, so very, very sorry to hear about that. Um, that's it from the show today. Boys and girls, there is now a post address. Uh, one of the bosses, uh, one of the managers of one of the venues that I work at has uh, kindly allowed me to use a post address. So that's coming up in a second if you want to grab a pen and paper. I don't think I've got it written down anywhere, actually. Uh, <laughs> dear me, I'll have to look it up now. But uh, the email address of the show... <clears throat> one moment. The email address of the show, if you ever want to uh, join in at any time, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The postal address is Chris Reardon, CO2 Brewers, B R E W E R S, 114 Clapham High Street, C L A P H. AM 114 Clapham High Street, London SW4 7UJ. Okay, so once again, Chris Reardon, CO2 Brewers 114 Clapham High Street, London SW4 7UJ. Don't forget you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, either the audio show or the video show. They're both on there. Just go onto iTunes and type in United Kingdom Talk or indeed uh, on YouTube as well. And my Facebook username is Chris Ridden UK. Thanks very much for watching and listening to the show today. Have a lovely weekend. Remember this program uh, is dedicated to my mum, whose 12 years anniversary is tomorrow on the 18th of November. I'll speak to you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.